these are the two shapes that we need to make the uh, contours for. So the first thing to do is to go into NC. As soon as you do that, you'll notice that it shows you where the datum position is for machining. So in this case, that is the XY position of the drawing. If we wanted to change that date and position from the vertical toolbar here, we can choose this icon, which is set NC datum. And for instance, we might in near snap mode, we might want to put the datum as the center of that circle, or it could be at the original zero position. So the first thing is to decide where you want zero for machining to be. So in our case, we'll leave it where it is in the center of the paper. Next, we'll create the contours. So we choose contour from the vertical toolbar. And what we need to do now is to choose the method of how we're going to start the contour. I'll just redraw the screen to get rid of any unwanted um, blue lines. So if I go into midpoint snap and I want to start machining the square here at the midpoint of any one of those lines. So I can choose maybe the top line here. The system then will show me this dialog box. Because it's a closed shape and there aren't any ambiguities anywhere, it's created the shape and its cutting direction is clockwise. We can change this later on if we need to. Or you can change it now by hitting reverse. The NC data at the bottom, the only thing we really need to bother with is the depth so that when we give it a visualization we can see how deep it is so I'm working in millimeters so that's 10 millimeters but if you're working in inches enter half an inch or an inch however thick the component actually is let me click OK so that creates a contour with the start point halfway along the top edge there so we're still in contour mode and our snap mode is still midpoint so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the to start this contour at the midpoint of this arc. So I can click that point. The shape is closed and again this is clockwise so both contours are cutting in the same direction and the depth remains at 10 millimeters. So that creates the two contours. If we now save that drawing away EDM2 and then we can take that through into the machining module machining wire EDM module and if we need to we can give this a part number or a program number or something else but we're not too worried about that for the time being okay so we're now in the wire erosion module we can see the date and position here which is where the data was in the drawing and we've got our two contours so what the system does is it automatically creates a go round which is a machining command for profiling for each of the contours that it's found so the geometry definitions here show us contour 0 and 1 and therefore here we've got the go round command for each one of those contours so now it's a question of deciding which one we want to machine and how we're going to do it. So contour zero was the first one which we did, which is over here. So to modify that or have a look at the way that that is going to work, we double click it. And the first thing we can see is that it's a single contour with XY path. When we say double contour, we mean two contours on top of each other so that we have a full four axis shape. The offset here, if we were cutting around the inside of there, we would want to cut round to the right. We need to give it a start position so that the wire can travel from the datum position to the start hole and then approach the start of the contour which was halfway along that top span. 
So from the options page here, we can specify the pilot hole position, and we want to give it a distance from this start point there. So we type that in, and the distance is going to be 10 millimeters because I drew that box as a 20 millimeter square. So obviously you would need to put in the size to the, of the box that you've created. The lead in and lead out move, the basic type is a linear move so that the wire will start here and go straight up or you could set a linear plus arc as shown here or a rectangular move where the machine moves up across, goes around an arc and then joins the, uh, the profile. So depending on which one of those you want to do, you choose the option from here and then type in the values. So we'll just have a linear approach. So that's done the first one here, now we need to do this one. And again, we're cutting around the inside of there, so the offset is to the right. Under the Options tab, I specify the position relative to the start point on the contour, and I happen to know that that circle was drawn as a 15 millimeter radius. So if we now run the job, we can see the wire moving from the start position here, the datum, rapids out to the first position here, cuts up, cuts all the way round, rapids across to the start position here, cuts out, cuts all the way round, and then goes back to the datum position. To look at it in the isometric view and switch on the wire animation, So that's cut those two shapes. If we now post process and we can use the uh, do, 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 is it the two axis one or the four axis one? I can't remember. That one okay. That gets compiled, and now we have the file at the bottom here. And as you can see, it's got messages, please thread the wire, and so on. As I say, the, the format of this post-processor may need modifying to suit your machine, but it should be pretty close to what you uh, need. OK, and then it's a question of sending this file through to the floppy and then to the machine.